Dear Doug Ford, please accept this as an open letter from your constituents as to why we feel you must step down as Premier of Ontario effective immediately. Just days ago, Dr. Kieran Moore gave us all a glimpse of hope. He explained that Ontario's testing strategy had finally changed. PCRs for the high risk only, rapid testing with no need to confirm positivity for the rest of us, and an end to contact tracing in schools along with shorter isolation time. It was as if your round table of reprobates had a moment of clarity and came to the realization that case counts were not what counts. As a result, we the people thought with better testing methods, tracking ICUs for relevant case data, and recording deaths from the virus and not with the virus, was the end. But instead, yesterday you woke up and told the people of Ontario, encore. Let's defy the science, statistics, and literally what the rest of the world is doing and shut down the economy one more time. You have once again closed indoor dining, gyms, schools, along with museums, zoos, and some personal care businesses. You've reduced capacities in retail environments, at weddings, funerals, and other religious services, and enforced remote work where feasible. And you said this was because of new modeling from Public Health Ontario, which, despite a mountain of evidence suggesting otherwise, shows that the new variant could eventually overwhelm the entire healthcare system. But I thought we established the corollary between cases and severity, ICUs and deaths, were no longer relevant. Nonetheless, as a result, you say that this could mean our hospitals end up thousands of beds short. So what have you done since the pandemic started to mitigate this potential issue? Have you built up our hospital capacity or increased your workforce? No, you literally diminished it and fired healthcare workers. Finally, you say, if we don't do everything possible to get this under control, the results could be catastrophic. It is a risk I cannot take. You see, Doug, this is where the silent majority decided it was time to speak up. It dawned on us that after two years of your tyrannical restrictions, mandates, and closures, that we do not feel any safer, any happier, any healthier, nor are we any better off. So why are we once again being forced to comply with these measures? And better yet, why would this still be your answer? In fact, because you are locking down the very same sectors you have before, you are inadvertently saying that the lockdowns never worked, that school and business closures never worked, mandates never worked, and that medical passports never worked. Have you learned nothing over the last two years? According to Dr. Eli David, lockdowns will be remembered as the greatest global policy failure in history. Professor Woolhouse, an expert on infectious disease at Edinburgh University said, lockdowns aren't a public health policy. They signify a failure of public health policy. We need better planning and preparation. In fact, Boris Johnson himself said, this variant is plainly milder. New measures are not needed. If these anecdotal perspectives do not satisfy your concerns, please consider the following. The Mental Health Commission of Canada reported that 17% of Canadians between the ages of 16 and 24 are seriously contemplating suicide. This is an increase of 89%, yet here we are entering another lockdown. If you were really doing all that you could do to get this under control, you would not continue to sacrifice our mental health. You would not continue to push every small business over the edge into bankruptcy. Quite simply, you would not continue locking us down. Instead, you're really doing all that you can to save your political career, and for this, you should be ashamed. You see, you are not just angering the fringe voters anymore, Doug. You are angering all of us. The ones who have followed the rules, received shots, isolated ourselves, closed our businesses, kept our children away from school, and used these insanely divisive medical passports. You are alienating the very people who put their faith in your plan. The people who have missed Christmas for the last two years. The people who have missed birthdays. The people who have sacrificed vacations, time with family, and time with friends. The people who have lost their livelihoods and watched those around them suffer the same fate in the name of doing their part. The people who have done everything you have asked because you said this would end the lockdown and that this would end the pandemic. Yet here we are, right back where we started. So what is your game plan now that we've told your line for two years? Your plan is to ask us to sacrifice everything again, but this time you're expecting different results. To continue paraphrasing Einstein, this is the definition of insanity. You simply expect us to follow your lead when you tell us to roll up our sleeve one more time, to lock down one more time, and give up what little hope we have left while you sit there with nothing to lose. But now we have unequivocal proof that your requests yield negative results and your promises are empty. In summation, your response to this virus and this pandemic have been divisive, damaging, and ineffective. Under your watchful guides, two weeks to flatten the curve has turned into two years, and we find it unacceptable that you have divided our nation and our neighborhoods. You have encouraged hate, denied responsibility, and destroyed our economy along the way. And now you want us to use the very same tools that caused all of this damage once again. Mr. Douglas Robert Ford Jr., we the people feel that you have failed to perform your job adequately and we believe it would be in the best interest of this province and your constituents that you step down as acting Premier of Ontario effective immediately. And Doug, please understand, this is not about retribution. It's about doing what's right and getting our lives back. The time, it's already gone. The money, it's already lost. But our people need to look forward, unify and rebuild because this is what matters and this is what's right.